Okay, I wandered around. Uh, Mrs. Lee's and I both had a look, and hopefully this matches what you've got, right? Colors or otherwise. So you've got those parts where it's increasing, becomes decreasing because it drops down, and then it reverts back to increasing all the way. Okay, is there any indication that it's going to change? It's going to come back around? No, that's kind of what the arrow indicates, right? It's like whatever I'm doing now, I'm just going to keep on going. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to, on the graph below, work out what the derivative should be, right? Now, I don't know specifically, like, precisely what the value will be, but I don't need to, okay? Over there on that left-hand side, let's look at that section with all the pluses, right? Because the gradient we've all indicated with pluses is positive, yeah? Then wherever you draw your, your gradient function, it's going to be up here, in this area here. Why would that be? Sorry, that's not, that's dark enough. Hopefully you can see. Why would I graph up there? Why would I, for example, not graph down here? We'll, we'll come to you first. What do you reckon? Oh, no, 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 no. Give us a thought. I don't, I don't care if it's right or wrong. We'll learn something. Yeah, it's positive. What's positive? Like the slope. Yeah. Okay, so come back to our original function. Hopefully this is similar to what you were thinking. The original function has a positive slope. And slope, gradient, is exactly what I'm graphing down here, right? So being that you've got all those plus signs over there, then you're going to be in this region when we draw, okay? Now, by the same token, let's get it with this guy, because it's not right. When I tra transition into this middle section, from here to here, okay, I'm not going to go above the, the x-axis. I'm going to go down below here. Can you see why? It's the same logic, but in reverse, right? You see how in this section, the original function is decreasing, so the gradient should be down here in the negative section. And we're going to finish off by doing something like this. Now, I'm going to let you try and join up, draw a graph onto this second Cartesian plane that you think roughly represents the gradient of this guy up here. The last piece of information I'm going to give you is, at some places, like we've shown positive and negative and positive, right? At some places it's really positive. It's a very large positive value. I want you to think about where that is. At other places on the graph, the graph is increasing, it's got a positive gradient, but it's not a very positive gradient, it's just like a teeny bit, okay? I want you to have a think about what graph you would therefore draw on that second Cartesian plane. Have a go, show it to the person next to you, see if you get something similar or different. Call Mrs. Lee's or I over if you're struggling or you think you have an answer. Some of you have got a shape there, and I wonder how many of you are kind of like, oh, that's what I expected, or that's, that's not what at all what I, what I expected. Okay, let's think about this from left to right. I'm going to start over there on the leftmost part. Look at the original function of the one at the top. We've already established that the gradient is positive. Would you describe it on the very leftmost part? Would you describe it as really, really positive or just a little bit positive? On the leftmost part of the graph. I agree it would be really positive because a, a large positive gradient would mean it's very steep. Right, which is exactly what it looks like. Do you agree with that? It's very steep at that point. Okay? So when you think about the gradient, I'm going to start somewhere up here, somewhere high, because that's what you just told me, a high positive gradient. But then something interesting happens. As you move from left to right, as you track along, right, the gradient stays positive. It stays positive. But then around here, around this spot, you can see it's still positive, but not a lot. In fact, it's about to become, what is the gradient we established it at that top of the peak? Zero. It's zero, right? So in other words, the gradient stays positive, but it goes down to zero. Now what that means on our gradient function down here is you start high where that leftmost blue x is, and you come down because you just told me it's going towards zero. The gradient is going towards zero. You with me? Okay, great. So we have this happening on the left-hand side. Now, in this middle section here, we know the gradient's going to be beneath the x-axis. It's going to be negative. But how is it going to be negative? Well, you notice it starts off kind of not very negative here. It's just gently negative. And then it's kind of like, like a roller coaster. It's like, whee, here we go. So it's the most negative at this spot here, right? And then it starts to, how would you describe it? Decline is a word you could use, uh, maybe decelerate. It sort of slows down a bit, doesn't it? Still negative, still decreasing, but by the time you get to this spot again, what's the gradient there? Zero. It's zero. So it goes zero, negative a little bit, and then back to zero. So what does that look like on our graph here? Well, I'm going to say it the, as I draw it. Negative, and then it slows down, and then it comes back to zero. Do you see that that matches sort of the motion of the graph up above, okay? 
And then lastly, it's going to become, we'll have a look, positive, right? And more and more and more positive as we go. What kind of graph is that? Oh, Mrs. Lee, do you have a question or a thought? Does it turn around at the end? You're talking about here? Yep. Does it turn around at the end? Does it look something like this is your question? Okay, fantastic. How would we work out whether or not our gradient function turns around? What would that mean? Did you like to look at what the numbers after that would be? Say that again a bit louder for everyone. Oh, you look at what like, the next few numbers would be, like they're positive or negative. Okay, so one strategy would be, let's just have a look at some numbers and test it out, right? Now that would be really helpful if I had a function and I could put some values into it. Sadly though, in this case, I'm just kind of, I have no algebraic or numerical tools. All I've got is the visual, okay? Apart from that strategy, which would work if we had numbers, what else could we do to try and work out whether it turns, yeah? Can I just say that when you differentiate something, the power goes down one, so it would be a parallel anyway. So huh. It's a cubed function, now it's a squared function. Oh snap, so some of you, some of you kind of picked up on this, right? We sort of guessed that, we didn't know for sure, but we said right at the beginning when we thought, oh, three intercepts, this is probably a cubic, right? Like x cubed of some kind. When we differentiate this, we know this from the rules, you should expect to get something like x squared or 3x squared or who knows, right? In other words, something like a parabola, does that ever turn back around? No, it doesn't. You need another power to have that stationary point. Um, there's other ways you could say it as well. See how this is getting more and more positive? Does it look like it's going to get shallower at any point and turn around? There's no indication that it is, so we have got no indication that this thing is going to become less positive. All right. Now, you can see this graph, uh, this page rather, has another Cartesian plane just beneath. But if you look really closely, and we haven't really addressed this notation um, in a lot of detail, but I'm going to introduce it to you right now. See how there's not one dash, there's two. So we very creatively call this y double dash. Um, this is, you take the derivative and you differentiate again. You just do it again, right? I want you to, I'm not going to hold your hands at all, right? Take that middle graph. Think about it in exactly the same way that we looked at the top graph. Put your pluses, your minuses, work out where your most important values are. See if you can come up with that bottom derivative. Off you go. Uh, 